Hello, today we are going to learn about the network model called the OSI model. The OSI model was developed and proposed by the International Standards Organization. The term open systems interconnection means that the systems are open for communication with other systems. The OSI model has seven layers, namely physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer and application layer. Before learning each layer in detail, let me show you the interaction between the layers in the OSI model. We are showing a connection between two hosts or two, uh, two devices A and B connected on a network with intermediate nodes in between where each no uh, node or each device has a network architecture with the seven layers of OSI model where you can see that there is an interface between each layer where each layer provides services or information to the layer above it through the interface. So basically an interface can be defined as the information and services a layer has to provide to the layer above it. Basically the first four layers they are related to the communications technology. The first four layers are related to the communication technology and the last three layers 567 are related with the user applications. Now let us learn each layer in detail. First comes the physical layer. The physical layer is responsible for transmitting the raw bits. Raw bits means zeros and ones, stream of zeros and ones over a communication channel. The main responsibilities of a physical layer are it takes care of the physical characteristics of interfaces and medium. The interfaces, as I told you, what is an interface and the medium, the transmission medium which we are using, the physical characteristics of interfaces and mediums are specified by physical layer. Secondly, representation of bits. The bits means zeros and ones. How are they represented? They are represented by either the bits are transmitted as electrical signals or optical signals. If it is electrical signals, by how many volts a zero bit is represented and by how many volts a one bit is represented, all such physical and electrical specifications are given by physical layer. Data rate. Data rate can be defined as the data at the rate at which the data is being transmitted. And the data rate is also a responsibility of the physical layer. Synchronization of bits. The sender and receiver should synchronize their clocks while the data is being, bits are being transmitted. Line configuration. Line configuration means that how are the devices connected to the line? Connected to the medium. Either they are connected using a point-to-point -point connection or a multi-point connection. Physical topology. Physical topology is that how are the devices in the network connected to each other using either the bus topology, star topology, mesh topology, etc. What is the transmission mode? When the two devices are transmitting data, what is the direction of flow of data? Is it simplex, half duplex or full duplex? You can see how the data from the data link layer is coming to the physical layer where a raw bit stream is being transmitted through the transmission medium to the destination's physical layer where the raw bit stream is given to the above layer that is data link layer. So our next layer is the data link layer. The data link layer basically transforms the physical layer, the raw transmission facility that it is getting from physical layer into a reliable link. What do you mean by reliable link? A reliable link meaning that it will pro make, the, uh, make the bit stream into error, uh, error free bit stream. Other responsibilities of data link layer are framing, physical addressing, flow control, error control and access control. Framing is grouping the bits coming from the physical layer into manageable data units is called as framing. You can see that the data coming from the physical layer here is being encapsulated into a frame. And 
the second responsibility of a data link layer is physical addressing when we want to transmit frames from one device to another device we need to have addresses or the physical addresses of the devices that physical addresses of the sender and the receiver of the source or the destination are specified by the data link layer and they are basically stored in the header of a frame the send the source and receiver destination address is stored in the header of a frame likewise uh, we have another responsibility that is flow control flow control means that a fast sender should not overwhelm, overwhelm a slow receiver meaning a fast sender should not send more than the cap receiving capacity of the receiver so data link layer enforces such flow control mechanism on the devices error control error control is about detecting and correcting the errors if any so that as we have already told you that data link layer provides a reliable link how because it does error control whenever the frames are lost or damaged the uh, the frames are retransmitted or recovered through error control mechanisms the information of error control is basically being stored in the trailer at the end of a frame you can see in the end of the frame we have the error control information whereas in the header we have the addressing information the last responsibility of a data link layer is access control access control already specifies by the word access that when more than two devices are sharing a communication link which device has a control over that particular link is specified by access control and data link layer takes care of access control coming on to the third layer is the network layer network layer is a third layer and a very important layer responsible for dest source to destination delivery of a packet as you know that a frame is a unit of information exchanged at data link layer but the unit of information exchanged at network layer is called a packet where a frame coming from the data link layer is encapsulated into a packet at network layer what are the responsibilities of a network layer other than source to destination delivery of a packet or to do source to destination delivery of a packet a network layer does logical addressing and routing you can see from the transport layer or to the net to the transport layer the network layer encapsulates the frame into a packet now what is logical addressing as you all know physical layer does physical addressing where it adds the physical address of the device which is actually the mac address whereas a network layer where when we want to transmit a packet on across network from one network to another network we need logical addressing where to uniquely identify a device on across networks we make use of a unique ip address for every device in the network that logical addressing is the responsibility of network layer and that logical addressing information that is the source ip address and the destination ip address is stored in the header which is a header being added to the packet the next responsibility of a network layer is routing when many links are connected to create inter network whenever we are connecting networks of networks we will have to connect devices such as routers to route or switch the packets to their final destination this process is called as routing and this is also the responsibility of network layer transport layer the next layer is a transport layer which is responsible for process to process delivery of an entire message in transport layer we are doing communication between the processes and to communicate between the processes we need the addresses of the processes and that addresses are nothing but called as a service point addresses a uh, entire message that is to be transmitted at transport layer is being divided into segments at the sender side the message is divided into segments and at the receiver side the message is being reassembled 
for segmentation and reassembly we require you can see uh, the entire message is being divided into segments where every segment has a header containing the information about the sequence number of that particular segment connection control connection control is a service provided by transport layer which is either connection oriented or connection less the transport layer also does flow control but the flow control is process to process or end to end flow control it also does error control as the data link layer does device to device error control here we do process to process error control where the only error control mechanism that it can provide is retransmission coming on to the next layer that is the session layer the session layer is responsible for dialog control and synchronization what is dialog dialog control making two devices to enter into a dialog or communication what is synchronization synchronization is that the session layer allows us to introduce checkpoints in long communications if we checkpoint long transmissions it allows them to pick up from where they left off in case of any crash or recovery what is token management token management helps us helps two parties not to uh, enter into one's critical region simultaneously meaning that it prevents two parties from attempting the same critical operation simultaneously you can see the we have uh, the synchronization points as what i told about checkpoints in the message then comes the presentation layer the presentation layer as the name specifies deals with the presentation of the data the syntax and semantics of data which is being in, uh, which is being exchanged between two systems it take care takes care of translation encryption and compression what do you mean by translation see when we are on a network every device will have its own data format so the source uh, format has to be converted to a common format and again from the common format it has to be converted to the destination format that is the job of presentation layer another thing that a presentation layer does is encryption what is encryption to in order to provide security and security and privacy the original message is being encrypted at the sender side and it is being decrypted at the receiver side third compression when we have data uh meaning when we have multimedia information to be transmitted like audio video we need to compress the data reduce the number of bits all these three things translation encryption and compression are taken care by presentation layer the last layer you can see the information coming from the application layer goes on to the presentation layer for translation encryption and compression then comes the application layer the seventh layer of that is the application layer it enables the users whether human or software to access the network basically an application layer provides services to the users how does it provide and what kind of services an application layer provides are it provides uh, with uh, net network virtual terminal okay using a protocol like telnet so that we can log into our remote host remote host it has protocols like ftp uh for file transfer access and management mail services for sending and receiving emails directory services all these services are provided with the help of many higher level protocols at the application layer you can see at the application layer we have direct interaction with the with the user which is either a human or a program so this was about the osi model the seven layers of osi model Thank you.